up. And before us, we have a Rarus Hen's Teeth Siemens Acillar D1032. This is from the time period. I don't know exactly what year it is because I can't find out because there's no information on the internet. When they were using analog and digital technology together, sort of a hybrid. And what I was going to do is, this has been in storage for years, and I was going to fire it up, get myself familiarised with it again, and perhaps do a quick review for you all, because it does have a printer that goes here on the top. I would show you, but it's uh, got loads of screws sorted out on it over there, so it has a job, you'll see it later. Yeah, so it can print your results out for you. Unfortunately, the pens don't work anymore, so the printer will try to print, but nothing comes out really. Other than that, the scope works usually fine. So, I fired it up, thought I'd make a little quick intro video for the Facebook group, and bang, it emitted a load of grey smoke before it even had a chance to boot up the operating system. Uh, so, we took it apart. Oh, I killed it straight away, didn't have time to boot. I killed it straight away, and we took it apart. And I looked at all the caps and everything, could not find a thing wrong with them. Um, but then I looked at the battery, and I'll just bring you over to see the battery. Okay, here we have the interior of the scope. There's the CRT. And there's the battery. Uh, I've taken the case off to look inside, and you can see it's a mess. Uh, I'm not... 100% sure it is that that's blown and made all the smoke, but as everything else looks clean, I'd say that's the uh, the suspect. So what I'm going to do is remove that. We've actually removed the PSU already because I checked all the caps on that first. Uh, so we're going to remove the board, desolder that, get rid of that. And because it's been leaking, there's likely some contamination of the board underneath. You can see actually. Maybe just a little bit of green there. Yeah. So we will neutralise that with vinegar, wash the board off, dry it in the oven for a bit, and then I'll reassemble and see if it's going to work. Hopefully it does. Hopefully. So, next step, disassemble what is left of this. That was much harder to do than I thought it was going to be. It's going to be a bugger to get back together, but there we go. That's for then, and this is for now. So our job is to next job is to desolder those pins, get this batch out. But it looks that there's no non the acid has actually leaked. Where are we? Can the camera see? There we are. It looks like none of the uh, chemicals in there have actually leaked from the battery. So, looks like we're doing good. Maybe just a case of removal. But I'll uh, neutralise it anyway, just in case. Alright, let me get that out. Okay, it's out and you can see a little bit got spread over there. But it looks in general very good condition. So, I'm just going to... Get dab some vinegar, 
down into those holes then wipe it clean and uh, allow it to air out and then we'll put it together this is the battery itself i'll just strip this bed and we'll have a look at it okay i have the cover off the battery and uh, there's no obvious signs of explosion but it can be the smallest little hole and all that stuff's been coming from somewhere so uh, it's probably leaked out of the same hole battery was a pain to remove Ooh, hello could it be down that joint there do know hard to tell mm, could be yes could be that could be what blew there but yeah this this was hard to get out because usually you just desold it but on two legs there was no solder showing but they were holding tight so i had to heat up the leg at the same time as pulling so i had to basically walk it out the board but there we go so i'm going to now do the vinegaring it's just a q-tip dipped in white vinegar i'll spread it around there dry it off then we'll get this thing rebuilt Turns out I didn't need to take it all out, but there we go. And uh, see if this works. Be right back. Right, some time later, and uh, it is plugged in, rebuilt to a certain level where I can test it. I'm not entirely sure the CRT is installed correctly because it kept falling off every time I tried to put the uh, neck thingy on, whatever you call it, because it kept falling off. So I'm going to, it's on a BCD, and I'm going to try it, might die, might do nothing. Hang on, the BCD might not be set right, hang on. Okay. <laughs> right, okay, let's try this thing. It's booting. Do I have an image? Oh. oh. Well, you can hear the printer going. And... We have an image. It's out of tune because, uh, you know, buttons off and everything. But bloody hell. I honestly thought that was not going to happen that easily as a focus. Whew. I am genuinely no idea what I'm doing. Data menu. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, I am genuinely surprised that's gone that well. And I'll give it a couple of minutes to run, but nothing inside seems to want to blow up at the moment. Whew. I'll put it back together. I'm actually sorry, a little bit, because I was genuinely quite nervous about that. And wow, it worked for once. My hand. <laughs> so like, the floor is covered in foam that was surrounding the uh, CRT. Uh, insulation between the CRT and the shielded neck. A lot of that has come off, so I suggest never touch the, the shield again. Uh, well, 
genuinely surprised that didn't blow up. Genuinely surprised we even got an image on there. Okay, I shall now calm down. Because <sighs> oh, the problem is all the pins on the back of that got twisted quite badly. And I wasn't sure that it would all make contact, but yeah. And the neck kept falling off every time I tried to install it. It was a pain in the ass. I was actually ready to give up at one point, but... <sighs> right, let's get this thing back together. Right. Power it in. Go. Right, it's left behind an extremely dirty floor. What makes me uh, glad that this works even more is the fact that the power switch inside, when I pulled this apart, I pulled the mechanism away from the board so it would not operate. It needs pressure, it needs to be held against the board to go backwards. So I actually came up with the idea of uh, tie wrapping it to itself, and that seems to work. So here goes, try again. Yeah, I see the printer trying to do stuff, but obviously pens don't work and it's out of paper, so. And here we go. Lovely bright trace. Look at that. Vindava. And. There we go. I've actually forgotten how to use this, so. There we go. Which is why I was doing uh, the video to try and get remind myself how to use it. So there we go. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna have to learn how to use it again. Uh, DC ground AC. It's just DC. Well, there's something there, but it's not set up. So anyway, yes, she's back. Let's just try that. If I can. I had more than one hand and a gripper. Press it again. There we go, it did something. But anyway, she's back. I will uh, get used to it again and do a full review of this system, which has actually got menus and everything because it's analog digital. And uh, yes, if you like this sort of video, like electronics, like retro gaming, like channel messing around, then please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video as that does help. And you can support us on, ew, that's disgusting, uh, Patreon. And you can join us in Facebook and Twitter. All the relevant links are below. So, welcome back. And thank you very much you need for to watching. You dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>